Hello Gut Squad and welcome back to my channel. This is Cecily as always. Today is going to be a video all about hernias. I want to make a quick disclaimer that I am not a medical doctor. I am not a nurse, even a phlebotomist. I am just a student and a patient myself and I've had a number of surgeries and sort of educated myself along the way. Everything I say today can be found online, is publicly available. I'm going to leave some links in the description below that will sort of elucidate everything I'm talking about today and you can do further research or consult your doctor if you are concerned about developing a hernia or a current hernia. So I'm gonna start off by talking briefly about what a hernia is. A hernia refers to any time an organ or fatty tissue squeezes through an opening in the muscle wall and thus encroaches on an area of the body where that organ or fatty tissue should not be. My experience has been with intestinal hernias where intestine actually squeezes through some kind of muscle wall, in my case, the abdominal muscle wall, and causes issues. So there are two basic types of hernias in terms of severity. There are reducible and non-reducible hernias. A reducible hernia is a hernia that you can push back into the muscle wall from whence it came with relatively light pressure, and it'll sort of stay put again maybe until you stand up. Usually when you lay down, these reducible hernias become less bulgy and they are considered typically a little less serious. But a non-reducible hernia is a hernia that can't be pushed back in, can't be reduced. So these types of hernias are more concerning to doctors and surgeons because these types of hernias can actually become incarcerated. An incarcerated hernia refers to any kind of hernia that is stuck in its place and cannot be put back on its own. Typically some kind of surgery might be suggested if you have a non-reducible or incarcerated hernia. Incarcerated hernias are especially risky because they are at risk of becoming strangulated. So let's say you have a portion of the intestine, which is what I've had in the past, pushing through your abdominal wall and it gets incarcerated there, it gets stuck. So this presents an issue because blood flow to that portion of the intestine may be restricted by this incarceration. And that would be called a strangulated hernia. The strangulated hernias are typically what you would consider an emergency case for a hernia and would require immediate medical attention. Keep your doctor aware if your hernia goes from reducible to non-reducible because that's certainly a change that I think they would be interested in. So let's talk now about the types of hernias. Hernias, again, can be classified by their severity, which we just talked about, or by their position in the body. So the first type of hernia I wanna talk about is an inguinal hernia. Inguinal hernias are essentially when a portion of the intestine or bladder pushes through the abdominal wall, or when one of these organs pushes through the inguinal canal in your groin area. These types of hernias are certainly most common with men because men have natural openings to allow for blood flow into their reproductive organs. That's not to say women can't get these kinds of hernias, they certainly can, but men just tend to get them more frequently. Also, the, the chances that men get these inguinal hernias increases as they age due to natural thinning and weakness in the muscle wall. An incisional hernia involves the intestine pushing through a previously made incision in the abdominal wall. This is the kind of hernia I've had experience with because I've had many abdominal surgeries and I've had the case where my intestine is pushed through one of those previously made incisions and sort of gets stuck there. So these kinds of hernias are pretty common. It affects men and women pretty equally. Anyone can have surgery. And if you have surgery and you're worried about this type of hernia, definitely talk to your doctor about how to avoid it. One thing that I've learned is that too much inactivity can actually help lend itself to these types of hernias. If you're not careful to stay relatively active after a surgery, you might face some atrophy or muscle weakness that comes from not moving around too much. I know it's so painful to move around after a surgery, but it's really important to stay relatively active because if you don't, you might put yourself at risk for that muscle wall becoming too thin and too weak to keep the incision closed 
permanently and it may reopen and allow some abdominal tissue like intestine to get through. So these types of hernias can be pretty scary because you don't know if they're gonna happen to you. If you overextend after surgery, you may also get this kind of hernia. I know, you can't win. It's a balancing act, you have to be careful. You have to stay active, but not too strenuously because if you don't walk that tightrope, you may face some of these herniation concerns. My best suggestion for managing re-strengthening after you've undergone some kind of surgery, if it's available to you, is physical therapy. I've done this quite a few times, even like aqua aerobics and other sorts of light physical exercise that are really geared toward strengthening your abdominal wall muscles can be so helpful, especially if it's under the guidance of a physical therapist who's trained and certified and understands how to manage getting strengthening, but not too much so that causes this risk of herniation. Again, I know it's a scary thing because you don't really know where to turn, but physical therapists have always given me the best possible chance to get back on my feet and helped me avoid re-herniation and re-injury after I've gone through surgeries and wanted to resume physical activity. The next type of hernia is called an umbilical hernia. The umbilical refers to the belly button area or the navel because the umbilical cord is what connects you to your mother as a baby. These types of hernias occur when the umbilical area, the navel is weak, the muscle tissue surrounding it becomes weak for some reason, and some abdominal tissue is able to push in through that weakness. This type of hernia is very common in babies, and it's really the only kind of hernia I've ever read about healing on its own as a child ages. But if you're an adult with an umbilical hernia, do not count on this happening. Please consult a doctor because they're the only ones who can maybe prescribe surgery or something along those lines to help fix the hernia. Pregnancy, excessive body weight, or too much physical lifting, lifting weights, for instance, that are too heavy for your strength capacity, are all ways that these types of hernias can manifest in adults. Epigastric hernias occur due to weakness, thinning, or even gaps in the very upper portion of the abdominal wall. So epigastric above the stomach usually. These hernias are equally likely in men and women. Hiatal hernias are the next type of hernia that I wanna talk about because they are pretty common. Hiatal hernias occur due to weakness or opening in your diaphragm, which is the muscle that affects your breathing. So these diaphragmatic hiatal hernias can be quite intense because sometimes they cause this sort of GERD phenomenon that can actually erode your esophagus and cause really severe heartburn. So if you suddenly have these symptoms, even if you don't know that it's a hernia, certainly something to bring up with your doctor because new or worsening reflux might be an indication that this hernia is occurring. These hernias are especially difficult to treat surgically, so the surgery for them might require you to stay in the hospital a little bit longer than the other hernias I mentioned if you're getting a repair surgery. That's all the types of hernias that I wanted to talk about. Now, really briefly, because this video is already so long, <laughs> I want to talk about hernia management. Hernia management is something that a lot of people research and might have some misconceptions about. Hernias do not repair themselves. They have to be treated with surgical options or with some lifestyle changes, but the hernia won't go away unless surgery is employed to actually put that organ or fatty tissue back in the hole and close and seal up that hole forever. If you have a hernia and you experience some new fevers that are unexplained, nausea, vomiting, things like that, please either go to the emergency room or talk to your doctor about these changes because it could be an indication that the hernia has sort of increased in severity and you might need surgery to fix it. In many cases, doctors actually don't recommend surgery for hernias because sometimes they can cause more harm than good. As I talked about, some hernias are caused just due to incisions. If the doctor is worried that it would put you at more harm than relieve risk for treating your hernia and they tell you that they don't wanna operate, don't be too surprised, it's pretty common. Living with a hernia can be tough because you're always worried that you might exacerbate the problem. 
But as I mentioned, there are some exercises that you can do, especially I would advise under the advice of a physical therapist to strengthen the area around the hernia, sort of reduce the chance that that muscle wall will keep expanding and opening up and letting that intestine or bladder or fatty tissue leak out of its original place. These exercises can be researched. I'll leave some links down below, but I would really recommend that you consult a physical therapist and do this with some medical professional because if you do the exercises wrong or improperly you might actually make the problem worse so please be careful when you're doing these exercises they are not to be taken lightly but they may really help you improve your chances of not needing surgery and being able to live a pretty healthy normal life with the hernia and reduce the risk that it gets much worse or incarcerated whatever you do do not lift weights that are too heavy for you this is a huge reason that people get hernias in the first place and it's one of the biggest reasons that people end up making the hernias worse. I struggled with this. I was given a really extreme weight limit, about 10 pounds, if you can believe that, because I had to be really conscious of the fact that I'm an increased risk for things like prolapse and hernia with my stoma. So not every ostomy has such severe weight limits, but it's certainly not beyond the realm of possibility that you'll be given a weight limit after your surgery to avoid incisional hernias or any other kinds of hernias that might happen due to this extreme weight lifting. So sorry all you ostomate bodybuilders out there, but it's probably good to avoid lifting weights that are severely above your strength capacity because it might result in herniation. So be vigilant about that. Another big thing I wanna talk about for avoiding making hernias worse or re-herniation or herniation in the first place is straining while defecating or urinating. As someone who's experienced extreme, nearly deadly constipation and urinary retention all at once at times, it was great. High school was amazing for me. It is super important not to strain because when you strain, you are putting pressure in your abdominal wall that might make you herniate. If you are experiencing urinary retention or constipation, the best way to deal with it is to address that problem head on instead of straining on the toilet all day, which I have done before. It is not good for your body. If you have urinary retention, seeking out things like catheters to help empty your bladder without you needing to actually urinate on your own is a really good way to go. I've done that for many years. And another great way to go for constipation is to increase your fiber content with things like Metamucil to help you defecate naturally with less constipation and thus avoid the urge to like push like hell on the toilet because that can be really dangerous, especially if you're fresh out of surgery. That sort of concludes my overview of hernias. I hope it was informative for you guys. If there's anything about hernias or even about post-op recovery that you'd like for me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. Like I said, I'll be leaving some helpful links there. And as always, I hope you guys are staying happy, healthy, and safe in this trying time. Stay safe out there, Gut Squad. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.